Washington and Spokane voters are famously independent, voting for the person and not the party. Voters want to know the person behind the policy. Join host Sulani Madsen as she interviews 2016 general election candidates for local, state, and federal office on the experiences that have shaped their lives. The Meet the Candidate series is sponsored as a community service by the Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, the law office of D.C. Cronin, and We Believe, We Vote. Now, here's your host, Sulani. Welcome to Meet the Candidate, and for this session I'm talking with Mark Molosha, who is running for state auditor. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. It, the, now, first thing is uh, describe for people how you see the, the office of state auditor. It doesn't sound really exciting, but I'm... Oh, it, it is exciting. <laughs> the state auditor is the principal uh, public servant in Washington State who's in charge of accountability for public funds. The auditors want to make sure that our, our, your tax dollars get spent wisely. Okay. Well, that does sound a session like something I, somebody I would want to have uh, on the job. Um, let's talk a little bit about your background, your, your education, and, and uh, where you grew up. I, uh, I grew up in, uh, born in Biloxi, Mississippi, grew up in New York City, joined the Air Force at 17 um, at the Air Force Academy, uh, graduated with engineering, and four hours after I uh, graduated, the airplanes flew over, we threw our hats up in the air, I married Michelle. That was 36 years ago, a month ago. And, um, and then I went in to the Wild Blue Yonder with Michelle uh, and uh, ended up stationed at Grand Forks Air Force Base uh, flying B-52s. I was a pilot for the Air Force. Hey, I noticed uh, when I looked at your bio that you had a degree from the University of North Dakota. Yes. And while I was sitting there in between flying the airplanes, I went to a night school and picked up an MBA, uh, which got me all involved into the whole business in quality management field, and the Air Force saw that and said, oh, you need to go here to the Northwest. So they sent me here to uh, Seattle to help run the B-1 program for the Air Force. So I was an Air Force captain, blue suitor, put in charge of the $2 billion B-1 program. And, um, and so I got, that's what brought me to the sunny and wet Northwest. Okay, well, that was, that, that's a position of accountability, too, that when you're a contract uh Contract manager. In fact, um, there I was very much involved, if you remember, the procurement scandals of the late 80s, mm -hmm. the $700 toilet seat cover, mm -hmm. the $600 uh, cans of paint. I was actually involved in those series of audits, and that, at time I realized that we have to do better. And both the Air Force and Boeing got involved in the quality movement. Not just, you know, uh, you know, military inspections at the end, but we need to stop all these procurement horror stories where money is getting wasted. And that got me involved in the Baldrige program and quality audits. So it's been my passion of mine since then. And I've been everywhere I've been, uh, whatever organization I've been, implementing quality to make sure we have efficient and effective and ethical organizations. Okay. So that life experience, a lot of that is that from the military, but before that, was there a first job that kind of taught you the, the work ethic that you brought to the, to the military? Uh, well, uh, I grew, I would have to say it all started growing up with my uh, two brothers and two sisters in, in a working class family, Italian uh, Catholic family in New York City, a uh, tight knit family, if you can imagine back then, where we're all about making sure we had a family owned business, where I probably peeled, you know, 50,000 potatoes, but <laughs> learned the values of hard work and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and again, starting in that family-owned business. And then, of course, at the Air Force Academy, do not lie, cheat, or steal. And the Air Force is all about results and accountability. And uh, we had a lot of responsibility as a, as a pilot and then later on as a contract manager. That's where I got my values and my, my core, core beliefs that we should be good stewards that we should be held accountable to all our actions. Okay. Well, when you came, you were out here with the the B one program, and uh, and you realized the importance of that uh, that accountability loop. What what drew drew you into public service as a place to uh, to to carry that interest? Uh, uh, ultimately, uh, I realized, and this is why I ran for office, is that government should be good stewards of, of your resources, and when government um, fails. You know, we don't just waste money. As you see in the headlines just recently with Western State Hospital, with the Department of Corrections, people could die because of government poor performance. 
So I believe there's a f fundamental uh, morality and ethics about government should be spending money, uh, uh, people's tax dollars wisely because we're taking care of, of, of children. We're taking care of the most vulnerable citizens. So we should be holding ourselves accountable. And government, which is, is out there doing a lot of good things, should be doing its best it can um, as far as addressing people's needs. And, and we, if we have governments that are failing to perform, I guess it's a blight on what we're trying to do. Okay. Is there some particular um, uh, incident from, well, you kind of talked about that a little bit with the B1, with the, the auditing uh, turning up incidences of poor stewardship. Um, I was interested when I looked at your bio in your, your experience as a teacher as well, since education has been such a, a big issue in the headlines today. Is there some particular interesting incident from your teaching experience that would tell Abs people about you? Absolutely. Um, uh, um, uh, what I quickly saw with schools working as subject teachers is that we have to do better. Um, schools need to engage parents better, uh, and we have to stop the tremendous what I call dropout rates that we see, especially in high school. Uh, we have 25 percent of our students failing to graduate, and, um, and as you know, in, in a lot of the classrooms, depending on which classroom I go to, I see well-designed school uh, classroom uh, programs that I was able to teach it, but in some classrooms, not very done, done very well. Uh, and that's an indication that management at, at the school teachers aren't teaching all kids correctly. So uh, that's just one instance of where there was poor performance in some schools. And we can do, especially nowadays, where education with the McClary decision, education is a paramount duty. We should do that a good duty in all school districts, whether rich or poor. How would the state auditor's office maybe interface with education? Oh, uh, I don't know if you know that, but I was involved in passing a number of education bills. But we, uh, the legislature has passed a number of bills as far as accountability, make oh. sure we have the right um, I, I would, House Bill 2261, where we should have an accountability system set up and a monitoring system to set up to make sure we're spending our money wisely, that all facets, all processes of uh, involving the student should be done correctly. We don't have that system in place yet. The state auditor could help to make sure all students being taught to high standards. Okay, well that would be a way of answering the question people ask is are we spending the money wisely? Exactly. In and, and in fact as a quality examiner, I've I've audited hospitals, I've audited mm -hmm. uh, 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 nonprofits, uh, state agencies, for profits, and, and even education facilities I've audited. And um, and there's no doubt in my mind that we can spend our money a little bit more wisely and get better results because we're healed to, we're public uh, uh, Public servants are here to serve, and so we should be doing it the best we can. Okay. Well, Mark, I wanted to leave you some time to, to give that direct pitch. Why should people vote for Mark Melosha for state auditor? Well, besides uh, I've been in the audit business for 30 years and improving organizations, I think it's time we have a state auditor who actually knows about auditing and who has that passion to make sure that all our government agencies, all our local governments are doing well, are serving the customers, are getting results, and people – are, are, uh, uh, can trust our government um, agencies again. So that's why I'm running for state auditor. Well, I think that rebuilding trust is a great goal and something we certainly need to do in the, in, with our government. But thank you very much for coming, Mark. I appreciate you being here and joining us in Spokane. Thank you for having me. Meet the Candidate is produced in Spokane, Washington by SpokaneTalksOnline.com, which is solely responsible for its content. The Meet the Candidate series is sponsored as a community service by the Ponderosa Republican Women's Club, the law office of D.C. Cronin, and We Believe, We Vote. All Meet the Candidate conversations are posted on our YouTube channel, posted as a podcast on our website, and will be featured in our 24-7 live stream. Find us at SpokaneTalksOnline.com.